Hey, what's up everybody? This is Clayton Gonsalves with Go Analytics, and today we're gonna learn how to reduce the number of rows in our queries by using the group by function in Power Query. So let's go. Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay up to date on all of our data visualization and data analysis videos. All right, so today we're talking about reducing the number of rows in our queries. So this is usually done when you've got a significant amount of data that is coming into Power BI and to improve the performance of your report, you need to filter it down a little bit and group it by some variable. So let's go ahead and take a look at my laptop and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so the group by function in Power BI is usually very useful when you're consuming a significant amount of data. And let's say you have daily data coming in, but you only need to analyze it on a monthly basis. You can group all of that da daily number of rows into one row per month so that you have a smaller data model. And this can be very useful to reduce the data model size and improve your report performance. So let's take a look at an example here. I've got a sales query here where we're a manufacturer of some products and we want to create an analysis to understand our sales by product. So in this case, we're not uh, grouping by a date, but we're grouping by product. So we have a column here called product ID. So we're able to group all of our sales by product. All right, so let's take a look at how we do that. But before we take a look at how we do that uh, inside of Power Query, let's take a look at our data because understanding our data setup is gonna be very important. So we've got a few columns here. We got sales order ID, order quantity, product ID, unit price, line total, which is the total sale. So understanding all of your columns is going to be important because you're going to need to add a function or a, a, an aggregation to each column. So for example, in our product ID, we're going to roll up the order quantity by summing all of the orders, all of the products that we sold. When we look at the unit price, we might be interested in the average unit price or the lowest unit price or the highest unit price. So it'll all depend on the analysis that we're trying to do. And let's take a look at the product name. So how do we aggregate a product name? In Power BI, we can use a minimum or a maximum function because all of the product name is gonna be exactly the same. So if we just get the minimum, it's gonna be the lowest or um, if we use the maximum, it's just gonna be the highest, but it's gonna be all the same. And same goes for color. It's gonna, we'll use the uh, min function. When we look at standard costs, we'll look at average costs, list price, we can look at the list price, but again, it could depend if we're looking at the, the highest list price that we've ever sold this product for, or the lowest price that we've ever sold it for. We're gonna look at the weight of the product and we'll look at the average weight and then average days to manufacture. As well as we've got two columns here, a sell start date and a sell end date. So this is the date that we started selling this product and this is the date that we stopped selling this product. So we'll do a minimum for the start date and we'll do a maximum for the end date. Okay, so now that we understand how our data is set up, we're ready to take a look at how we can group this data by product ID. So we'll go over to the transform tab and the first button on the left here is the group by button. So notice that I'm already selected on the product ID so that when I click group by, it automatically picks up that I want to group by product ID. And there are two options for the group by function. We can have a basic, which is just 
We're grouping by the product ID and we're just grouping by one specific column. Or if we click on advanced, then we can group by multiple columns as well as we can have multiple aggregations. So as you can see here, we have a first one here and we can click on the button add aggregation. So you could, for example, group by product ID and by year that uh, the sale took place. That could be a possibility by using this option. So we're going to be using the advanced option, but we're going to continue to group all of our data into just, just by product ID. All right, so let's take a look at the aggregations. So we had talked about order quantity. So I'll go ahead and give that column a new name and we're going to call it total order quantity. And we're not going to do a count. Instead, we're going to do a sum. And these are all of the aggregations that are available to us. As I mentioned before, we can do average, minimum, maximum. We can count the number of rows. So we're going to do a sum here. And it's going to be a sum of order quantity. So it allows me to choose which column I want. All right. And then we're going to add another one for the unit price. And we're going to call it the average unit price. And we'll select average from the operation. And from the column, we're going to choose unit price. So we go ahead and do this for all of the columns that we want to aggregate. Okay, so after we're done creating all of our aggregations, we'll just go ahead and click OK. And this will result in a brand new query where we have everything grouped by product ID. So as you can see here, each product ID has its own line and we have all of our aggregated values here, like our average unit price, our total sales amount, our product name, which we use the minimum function on it, and so on, all the way until we have our sale sell start date and a, our sell end date. So notice that some columns were dropped. So any columns that we didn't create an aggregation for is not going to be in this new query. So that's just one thing to, to note from this. But we essentially took this, this query and we reduced it from the original so the original here had significantly more rows so if we take a look at the column profile here so taking a look at it here our original query had 121,000 rows and if we navigate over to our uh, grouped uh, rows so after we applied the group by function to this query, we see that uh, the number of rows went down. And after applying the group by function, we have 266 rows, which should correspond to 266 product IDs that we have in this query. So that's it. That's how you can use the group by function in Power Query to reduce the number of rows in your data tables. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next video.